ஸ்ரீ சாயி சச்சரித்திர சாப்டர் எயிட் டைட்டில்ஸ் இம்பார்ட்டன்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஹியூமன் பர்த் சாய்பாபாஸ் பெகிங் ஃபூட் பைஜாபாய் சர்வீஸ் சாய்பாபாஸ் டார்மெட்ரி ஹிஸ் எஃபெக்ஷன் ஃபார் குஷால் சந்த் ஆஸ் ஹிண்டட் இன் த லாஸ்ட் சாப்டர் ஹேமந்த் பன் நவ் எக்ஸ்பிளைன்ஸ் அட் லெங்க் இன் இஸ் ப்ரிலினரி ரிமார்க்ஸ் தி இம்பார்ட்டன்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஹியூமன் பர்த் அண்ட் தென் ப்ரொசீட்ஸ் டு ரிலேட் ஹவு சாய்பாபா begged his food how bajabai served him how he slept in the masjid with tatya pa- kote patil and mahal sapati and how he loved khushal chand of rahata importance of human birth in this wonderful universe god has created millions of creatures 84 lakhs as per hindu shastra's calculation including gods demigods insects beasts and men inhabiting heaven hell earth ocean sky and other intermediate regions of these those creatures or souls whose merits pre- preponderate go to heaven and live there till they enjoy the fruits of their actions and when this is done they are cast down while those souls whose sins or demerits preponderate go down to hell and suffer the consequences of their misdeeds for as long as they deserve it when their merits and demerits balance each other they are born on earth as human beings and are given a chance to work out their salvation ultimately when their merits and demerits both are worked out completely they get deliverance from deliverance and become free to put to the matter in a nutshell souls get their birth or transmigration according to their deeds and evolvement special value of human body as we all know four things are common to all creatures viz food sleep fear and sexual union in the case of man he is endowed with a special faculty that is knowledge with the help of which he can attain god vision which is impossible in any other species it is for this reason that gods envy the human species and aspire to be born as men on earth so as to get their final deliverance some say that there is nothing worse than a human body which is full of filth mucus felgum and dirt and which is subject to decay disease which is subject to decay disease and death this is true to a certain extent but in spite of these drawbacks and defects the special value of the human body is that man has got the capacity to acquire knowledge it is only due to the human body or on account of it that one can think of the perishable and transitory nature of the body itself and of the world and have aversion for sense and en- sense enjoyments and can dis- discriminate between the unreal and the real and thus attain god vision so if we reject or neglect the body because it is filthy we lose the chance of god vision and if we indulge in it and run after sense enjoyments because it is precious we go to hell the proper course therefore for us is to pursue pro- a proper course therefore for us to pursue is the following that the body should neither be neglected nor fondled but should be properly cared cared for just as a traveler on horseback takes care of his horse on the way till he reaches his destination and returns home thus the body should ever be used or engaged to attain god vision or self realization which is the supreme end of life It is said that though God created various kinds of creatures he was not satisfied for none of them were able to know and appreciate his work so he had to create a special being man and endow him with a special faculty that is knowledge when he saw that man was able to appreciate his leelas marvelous work and intelligence he was highly pleased and satisfied this is said by bhagavad gita uh, 11928 so really it is fortunate to get a human body better still to be born in a brahmin family and best to get an opportunity of being close to sai baba's feet and surrender to him <coughs> man's endeavor realizing how precious human life is and knowing that death is certain and may snatch us any at any time we should be ever alert to achieve the object of our lives we should not make the least delay but make every possible haste to gain our object 
just as a king leaves no stone unturned to seek his lost son, so with all earnestness we should strive to attain our end that is self realization. Casting aside laziness, warding off drowsiness, we should day and night meditate on the self. If we fail to do this, we reduce ourselves to the level of beasts. How to proceed? The most effective and speedy way to gain our object is to approach a worthy saint or sage or sadguru which who has himself attained God vision. What cannot be achieved by hearing religious discourses and study and study of religious texts is easily obtained in the company of such worthy souls. Just as the sun only gives light which all the stars put together cannot do, so the Sadguru alone imparts spiritual wisdom which all the sacred books and sermons cannot do. His movements and simple talks give us silent advice, the virtues of forgiveness, calmness, disinterest, interestness, charity, benevolence, control of mind and body, egolessness, etc. are observed by the disciples as they are being practiced in such pure and holy company. This enlightens their mind and lifts them up spiritually. Sai Baba was such a sage or Sadguru. Though he acted as a fakir, he was always engrossed in self. He always loved all beings in whom he saw God or divinity. By, by pleasures, he was not elated. He was not, dip, not depressed by misfortunes. A king and pauper were same to him. He, whose glance would turn a beggar into king, used to go begging food from door to door in Shirdi. And now let us see how he did it. Baba begging food. Blessed are the people of Shirdi, in front of whose houses Baba stood as a beggar and called out, O oh my, give me a piece of bread, and spread out his hand to receive the same. In one hand, he carried a turmoil tin pot, and in other, a joli or chaupadri, that is a rectangular piece of cloth. He visited certain houses daily. Liquid or semi-liquid things such as soup, vegetable, milk or buttermilk were received in the tin pot, while cooked rice, bread and such solid things were taken in the joli. Baba's tongue knew no taste as he had acquired control over it. So, how could he care for the taste of different things mixed up together? Whatever things he got in his joli and in the tin pot were mixed together and partaken by Baba to his heart's content. Whether particular things were tasty or otherwise were never noticed, was never noticed by Baba as his tongue was devoid of the sense of taste altogether. Baba begged till noon but his begging was very irregular. Some days he went to a few rounds, on other days up to 12 noon. The food, was thus, the food thus collected was kept in a kundi that is an earthen pot. Dogs, cats and crow, crows freely ate from them ate from it and Baba never drove them away. The woman who swept, swept the floor of the masjid took some 10 or 12 pieces of bread to her house and nobody prevented her from doing so. How could he, who even in the dreams never warded off cats and dogs by harsh words <coughs> and signs, refuse food to poor helpless people? Blessed indeed is the life of such a noble person. People in Shirdi took him in the beginning for a mad fakir. He was known in the village by this name. How could one who lived on arms by begging a few crumbs of bread be revered and revered and worshipped? But this fakir was very liberal of heart, detached and charitable. Though he looked restless from outside, he was firm and steady inside. His way was inscrutable. Still in that small village, there were very few kind and blessed people who recognized and regarded him as a great soul. One such person's account is given below. Baijabai's brilliant service. Tatya Kote's mother, Baijabai, used to go to the woods every afternoon with a basket on her head containing bread and vegetables. She roamed in the jungle about three, three coasts, that is about three miles, miles after miles, trampling bushes and shrubs in search of the mad fakir and after finding him, fell at his feet. The fakir sat calm and motionless in meditation. While she placed a leaf before him, 
spread her things, eatables, breads, vegetables, etc. thereon and fed him. Wonderful was her faith and service. Every day she roamed at noon in the jungles and insisted upon Baba to partake of the lunch. Her service, upasana or penance, by whatever name we call it, was never forgotten by Baba till the end. Remembering fully what service she rendered, Baba benefited her son significantly. Both the son and the mother had a great faith in the fakir, who was their god. Baba often said to them that fakiri, that is mendicacy, is real, lord, is real. lordship, that is riches, is transient. After some years, Baba stopped going into the woods and began to live in the village and take his food in the masjid. Thus, Bhaijabai's troubles of roaming in the jungles ended. Dormitory of Trio Ever blessed are the saints in whose heart Lord Vasudeva dwells, and fortunate indeed are the devotees who get the benefit of the company of such saints. Two such fortunate fellows, Tatya Kote Patil and Bhagat Mahalsapati, equally shared the company of Sai Baba. Baba also loved them both. These three persons slept in the masjid with their heads towards the east, west and north and with their feet touching one another at the center. After spreading their beds, they lay on them chit-chatting and gossiping till late at night. If any one of them showed any signs of sleep, the other would wake him up. For instance, if Tatya began to snore, Baba at once got up and shook him from side to side and pressed his head. If it was Mahalsapati, he pulled him close, stroked his legs and patted his back. In this way, for a period of 14 years, Tatya, leaving his parents at home, slept in the masjid on account of his deep love for Baba. How happy and never to be forgotten were those days. How to measure that love and how to value the grace of Baba. After the after the passing away of his father, Tatya took charge of the household affairs and began to sleep at home. Khushalchand of Rahata Baba loved Ganpat Kote Patil of Shirdi. He loved Chandrabhan Seth Marwadi of Rahata equally. After the demise of this Seth, Baba loved his nephew Khushalchand equally or perhaps more and looked after his welfare day and night. Sometimes in a bullock cart, at other times in a tonga, with intimate devotees, Baba went to Rahata. People of that village would come out with band and music and receive Baba at the gate of the village and prostrate before him. Then he was taken into the village with great honour and ceremony. Kushal Chand took Baba to his house, seated him on a comfortable seat and gave him a good meal. Then they talked freely and merrily for some time, after which Baba returned to Shirdi, giving delight and blessings to all. Shirdi is midway and equidistance from Rahata on one side, on south, and Neemgao on the other, that is north. Baba never went beyond these places during his lifetime. He never saw any train, nor travelled by it. Still, he knew exactly the timing of arrivals and departures of all the trains. Devotees who acted according to Baba's instructions, given at the time of uh, taking leave, fared well, while those who disregarded them suffered many mishap and accidents. More about this and other matters will be told in the next chapter. Bow to Shri Sai, peace to be all. Om Sai, Om Sai, Om Sai.